Um, mm. You know, I'm very hopeful now that, uh, you know, there's so many people that, you know, even that I've contacted wanting to do template letters. So the template letter that you have, I'm going to use to um, formulate one for Ireland so that we can, you know, yeah. people who are that way, you know, are open to um, taking action are going to start um, that movement because I think it really is going to be um, a generational shift here anyway because it's so deeply ingrained um, and it's also calling people to become you know self-aware and that's that's something that um, again like it's it's not everyone is at that stage it's like it's for people to come into on their own their own time uh, and like I said it's like you can't force people to change you can only lead by example so if you lead by example in your space and in, in who you're influencing that over time actually helps people to um, mm. to break away from the old the old model, which is um, is something that a lot of people all around the world have been working on for a long, long time now. But um, for me, like what was I had to do personally was just like not attached to the outcome of when it comes out because that was that was causing me a lot of personal um, pain and stress, and it was draining my energy. Um, so I've kind of just given given away the when the timeline has to happen because I know that there's you know a far greater plan that's happening even though and I can't see it so it's just like opening up to being a being a lighthouse for other people and that's really what I want to do now and that's what I am working on embodying so that people can find that when when they're ready um, and then you know that kind of has a ripple effect um, going out into the world yeah so that's that's where I'm at. Yeah, I, I can I can relate to that story a little, uh, quite closely as well. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's like um, it's also kind of um, like what you're saying when you're meeting that resistance. It's kind of, and that's actually the path that I kind of went on my own self because I was like, right, I've hit hit a ceiling in terms of how far I can go on the outer. So, like from say 2015, I started a very inward journey of like a self discovery process, and you know. Um, absorbing as much spiritual material and self-development as I possibly could because I felt like it was it was time for me to be able to go on that internal journey that I was being called to do um, and now I'm at the process now this year of really merging the two bringing what I've developed on an inner level into the outer space um, and kind of just holding that as a signpost to other people to go on that that journey as well so I think that um the fluoride is an issue, obviously it's a negative issue, but it's also a gateway for people to open up to something that's far beyond what they're currently experiencing as reality. So um, I'm very much on that kind of path of opening consciousness and evolving consciousness and then how to be, how to be somebody that can um, create a new model as opposed to fighting the old model. Because I think that was where I was like giving all my personal power over to the system that I didn't want and I was just you know getting everyone to just be angry and just fight against it keep resisting it and then it's like that 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 um you know law that it's like what you resist persists and so it's not about saying I'm going to ignore the issue but rather what you're saying is like you know you're finding a different way to go about it mm -hmm. um and so instead of instead of resisting it I'm now envisioning Ireland having pure water America having pure water you know all the countries having pure water um, and then being able to then offer people um, mm -hmm. the, the kind of solutions that I can provide at the moment. It's like, I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm not the, the oracle, but I'm actually inviting other people to, to go on that journey with me um, and to uh, put our energy into creating the new system, the new model that will serve us and that will be um, a win-win for everyone, not just for the benefit of the, the very f few. Uh, who do you think is, uh, apart from people selling water filters, of course, but <laughs> who, who, are, who is making money from fluoridation, do you think? Where's the vested interest, like, if you follow the money? Well, when I went to Washington, it's like, it was very clear that it well, started with the, um, like, aluminium industries and how they were getting rid of, um, you know, toxic waste, hydrofluoric acid into the water supplies. Um, so there's kind of the industry's benefit of getting rid of waste into the water. Um, and then obviously the dental associations are deeply vested in it, not just from a, from a financial position, but also from like, we're, with, we're upholding, um, you know, this system. So it's like, cause even Paul Connors, who's the, who's, who established Florida Action Network and it, originally, originally he, um, he has come over to Ireland on numerous occasions um, to us. And he was saying, 
you know, the fluoride issue is kind of like out there. And then when you kind of push behind that, then you're kind of tapping into the medical system. So the med, you're, you know, it's like, it's almost like he gives that analogy of like it being on the outer perimeter of a castle. And as you go in, you're, you're facing um, more and more uh, of the established power of the, the medical system and how that's become like a modern day religion. And so it's not even about like the information or the facts. It's actually, it's like a dogma that people have just handed over all of their personal power to. Um, and so mm. it's got multiple layers of, um, mm. of holding that in place. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's a, a big, big industry that, um, yeah. and again, but then it's like to say, oh, are we, are we so powerless we can't change? It's not that, it's actually about focusing completely on what we want to envision mm. and um, aligning our actions and our behaviors and our beliefs with that and then taking whatever inspired action that we feel we're called to do um, from a place of not resisting but rather just from mm. really from your own inspiration and, and that's coming from a totally different approach it's not op it's not oppositional even though what you're doing is you're saying yeah, I don't want that, but you're not actually opposing it. Like the thing about what you did about the uh, being the st being stripped of your rights, uh, naked protest. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, and, uh, that, was, that was that was born from major like rage that nobody was listening. So I was like, "That's it! I'm taking out my clothes outside the government. I'm doing it with a big banner, <laughs> stripped of my rights." Just, they're not listening. They're, they're not listening. It was just extreme protesting. Yeah. It was brilliant. It was like, I, I have huge respect for you know, all of that and your bravery and, you know, just coming out and doing all of that. I mean, it's, it's courage, you know, it's like amazing. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, it's just like, this is what interested uh, me to interview you about, you know, what inspired you to do that? What, you know, mm -hmm. uh, taking time out of your day, you know, it, given that you'd already, you know, done it for yourself, you know, to do it yeah. for others as well. You know. Yeah, but it was really a, le a lesson to me to just kind of um, not just be so focused on myself as, a, as an individual, but rather kind of open myself up to that I'm interconnected with the collective. And um, like, I remember even like before, yeah, I think we were talking about is it, um, how we began, how the inspiration came through. Like um, it was my mom and I, we actually went out, you know, so have you seen Star Wars? You know, there's a place called Skellig Michael in County Kerry. Have you heard mm -hmm. of that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Scully Michael. But anyway, um, I was doing some work with some energy therapists at the time and they said, you know, there's actually um, a, very, there's a ley line between Skellig Michael and Egypt and it's a very powerful energy point. And so anyway, we decided, my mom and I, to go out there and um, I basically kind of opened myself up to the universe and I said, um, you know, I'm here to do this work and I, I kind of made a commitment to it. Um, and I allow whatever wants to come through me for the good, for the highest good to come through. Um, and after that, it was just like this force of energy came through that it wasn't even, even though I was doing the things, it was like I was just being guided to do them. Kind of like if you've ever read the book, The Silicine Prophecy, it was kind of like that process of just, mm -hmm. you know, I was kind of co-creating it, but it was, you know, because even people were saying like, how are you doing this? And I said, you know, I am obviously doing the things and I'm showing up to it, but I'm, you know, I've, I've stepped into something that's far greater than myself. Um, and I'm doing it for, um, you know, completely pure intentions, not with any hidden agenda or personal will that's involved with it, but it was rather um, for the highest good. And so that was what kind of led me to um, follow that inspired action, um, which is, which is continue, you know, it's really like I'm following this trail and I'm continuing to do that to this day. And it's kind of, being able to in integrate that now so that I can, like what I said, it's just to be um, a signpost for other people to go on that, that journey themselves. And when they're ready to do that, they're coming out of that old um, separation of, um, you know, what, what I do doesn't have an impact on another person. You know, that, that kind of, like what you're saying, that survival-based thinking of just, I'll just get through the day and I won't actually think of these higher questions or, um, you know have those considerations um and i and i think that's where people are at a stage of their consciousness and then there's a there's an opening to people now taking that path um and everything is kind of has come in for that to happen and um you know i'm really excited to be part of that that movement 
is what I feel now. It's not, it's not like one person over the other. It's actually um, a movement of us being able to co-create that together. Um, and not, not that we all have to be the exact same, but that we're actually able to have that like unity in our diversity, that we're not like all trying to stamp out the, the differences of each other. Um, rather, we're actually able to come together and uh, celebrate those. What I'm doing at the moment is, well, that was why I put out the post on Facebook, which is how we connected, which was um, to have a template letter that I'll have as a downloadable that people can come onto my site and just print that off and, and start sending it in because it's, it's kind of people now are tuning into it more and more and that's going to increase. So then it's like, it's just, a, it's just a numbers game then of just getting more and more people to take that. And it's like, as you say, the work has been done there with the template letter. So it's not like they have to sit down and actually formulate the whole argument and go off on a big wild goose chase trying to get all the information. Um, it's pretty straightforward action that, that um, a lot of people can take. Um, and you know, over time, you know, create that as a voting issue that it's going to be yeah. driven by, by, by the, the collective saying, no, we don't actually, we don't accept this any longer. <laughs>